Hi everybody, five, the last day of the challenge. I hope that you've enjoyed what you've learned so far. So we've gone through quite a bit of content. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of a tying it all together for you and helping you through. And then we're gonna go into meditation and hopefully I'll have time to go through a meditation with you. So the things that I've taught you, are things that I've learned over about 20, let's say about 24 years, when I was younger, I used to use my mind to heal myself, but I didn't realize that that's what I was doing. And that's how, where the journey started. It started from when I was quite young and I started doing it when I was in my teens and underage drinking. <laughs> when in England, it's especially in the nineties, um, it was a lot of, there was not much to do. So a lot of us used to go out and drink. So hashtag live if you're live. Hi, Judy. So a lot of us used to go out and drink. Hi, John. And um, the thing was, is I was the responsible one. So we'd have something to drink and my friends would be really drunk and I would be feeling a little bit tipsy. And I was like maybe 16 years of age at this time. And... I would pretty much talk myself sober. I would take my, <laughs> I'd take myself somewhere where nobody else was and I would repeatedly say for like five minutes, I am sober as a judge and I would sober myself up and I would take my friends home. And I never realized that what I was doing, I just automatic, automatically did it and then my granddad said to me when I was seriously ill, when I was about 17 years of age, I'd been rushed into hospital and my kidney, my right kidney had stopped filtering and it was triple the size and there was afraid that it was going to pretty much explode. So they had to um, drain my kidney out. My granddad said to me, he said something completely out of character and he just said, and he went like that to me, mind over matter. Remember that, mind over matter. And from there, I just started using my mind to overcome things. So when I was 22 years of age, I was rushed into hospital and they thought that I'd caught typhoid in Mexico. So they put me on this isolation and completely shut access. No one could come in and no one knew what was wrong. And I pretty much was told that there's nothing that can be done. And then suddenly this doctor came from nowhere. No one knew who this doctor was. And this is in a book that I've contributed to my whole story. A very condensed version of some of the health challenges that I've been through. And they said to me, they said, we found out what's wrong with you. We don't know how it came about, but a doctor's coming and he's put notes and he's diagnosed you with ulcerative colitis but unfortunately Dawn your ulcerative colitis is so severe you're not going to survive with your bowel it's going to perforate and kill you but I had this absolute knowing and my granddad's words spiraled into my head again mind over matter and every night in bed for about two or three hours I would imagine and say that my bowel is healing it's not going to perforate and I'm not going to need to have this operation and three days later being scheduled I was wheeled down to the operating theatre I'd had the drawings of stoma nurse so a stoma is where um, they cut you open to put a colostomy bag because I wouldn't have a bowel they were going to remove it and the stoma nurse had come and they'd, they'd put the lines exactly where I'd be cut they'd put the cross where my colostomy bag would be where they'd actually cut me open and um, stretch my small intestine so I'd actually have a thick bowel to feed into the colostomy bag and I went down and I wouldn't sign the papers and in the UK if you're an adult you have to sign papers to have the operation or if you're a child it's your parents and I refused and they pulled my parents to one side and they pretty much tried to bully them into getting me to sign that didn't work so they asked my boyfriend and they just wheeled me down about, I don't know, maybe the next day. Can't really remember very much detail, but about the next day they wheeled me down again. And um, they had the papers there and they had me ready to put me under and I refused to sign them. That went three times, I refused to sign them. And I found out 
that I was the only case at that time to ever be treated and survive with my bowel. And I'm apparently, and I'm not 100% on this, I'm on medical journals in the UK, in the Leeds um, General Infirmary, because I was the only person to ever survive with my bowel to the extent of how diseased it was and how um, thin. And again, I'm just going to share this last one with you. It's related to the same thing. My body had shut down and I wasn't actually able to um, replace blood. My body wasn't able to do it anymore. And mind over matter again, I started to imagine that I was replacing my blood. And I started to replace my blood and I went back to go get my weekly blood transfusion. And they said, we're just going to take a blood test and see how, how much blood you're going to need. Because last time you needed a lot more than we thought. And they came back and when we need to take the bloods again, something's not right. It's saying that you've replaced all your blood and that's physically impossible. There's no way that you could have replaced your, that amount of blood in that amount of time. And I did. So if anybody says to you that you're not strong and you're not powerful and you're not amazing and you're not incredible, I say it's BS because I'm no different to you. The difference is, is I noticed I had these powers when I was younger, but we all have them. But you have to believe in yourself. And that's what day one was about, was giving you the strength to know that your mind is amazing. But you have to get it on side and you have to know what to do to get rid of the blocks and clear out the cobwebs of things that are not serving you. Your body is absolutely amazing and you don't need to get involved. It knows exactly what it's doing. It knows exactly what it's doing. So day two was teaching you how to start communicating with your body. If there is no communication between you and your body, then your body is just left to its own devices and that's not what it's designed for. It's designed for your mind to give it clear communication and it's designed is your mind for you to give it clear communication. So if no one is in control over your mind and your body, then they're running the show. And that's not what they're designed for. They're designed to do their job. But when you're not in control and you're not navigating your life and you're not taking responsibility, then they don't know what they're doing. They're just like, this is not my job. I'm just here to keep homeostasis, balance. I'm just here to survive. I'm just here to get you through this. And your body is just basically trying to keep you alive. And your mind is helping you find answers to have a better life. But if you've not programmed it right, it will do everything that you've taught it. And most of us, when we were early on in life, were taught negative patterns. We're taught that we weren't amazing. We was told that we weren't good enough in various different ways. So then what's happened is, is we've grown up as adults with these patterns that are not serving us. Because when we were younger, we believed that they were true. We're like sponges when we're kids. Day three, I taught you one of the best tools and techniques out there. It is the best tool. I don't care what anybody says and tells you about other tools and techniques. I have tried over 140 different tools and techniques, and I have never come across one that has been able to work for everybody. You just have to get rid of the blocks. If you have a judgment that it looks weird and strange, that will block it from working. But once you remove that, it will work. It's incredible. I've had people messaging me saying that they've had symptoms for 16, 17 years and they did the tapping after day three and they were they felt a shift and suddenly the symptoms disappeared. Now, it's not saying that this is going to be forever, but you don't need drugs. You just need to know how to help your body be it the best it can be. Day four, I shared with you about your dreams. Now, this may have been a bit deep for some of you, but that's okay. Just remember that your dreams are there to give you messages of what you're not able to process. So if there's a disturbance, an emotional disturbance that's happened during the day for you and you've not processed it, the chances are in the evening when you're sleeping, it will come back to remind you that it's trying to process and it's lodged and it's not working. Remember I spoke about the hippocampus and how it, it stores, it transfers and compresses from short-term memory to long-term memory. If it's struggling to do that, that's where the dreams come th through. And today I'm going to be sharing with you about meditation. 
So most of you have probably tried meditation and it's not worked for you. So I'm going to share with you why it's not worked. Woo! See, I'm so passionate. And I hope that you've got a lot out of what I've shared. And I'm going to be offering the next step to be working with me. Obviously, five days, you're not going to learn everything that you need to learn, nor can I give you all that information. You're going to, it's going to explode your brain if I shared everything that you needed to do to start changing your life. I give it to you in bite sized chunks and I give the right information at the right time for you. I know exactly what you need to process, exactly what you need to hear at that time, especially when I'm in a group environment or one on one. I know exactly what each person needs to be able to take them to that next step. And that's come from years of experience. It's come from helping thousands of people. It's come from my personal experience. Most things that people have been through, at some point I've been through something similar. Not the same. It might not have been at the level that you've experienced it, but I promise you, I have experienced a lot of struggle, especially when it comes to health especially when it comes to health. I've experienced so much suffering with my health that it's given me the ability to be able to communicate with people's bodies. And this might be very left field for some of you, but just imagine when you are ringing a phone, you pick up the phone and you ring somebody, it's a signal that's being sent out. So something is reading that signal. Same with the radio station when you're tuning in. I just can tune into the frequency of what your body's sending out. That is it. It's not rocket science. It sounds like it, it's impossible, but how do you think that they get all this technology? They model the amazing body, they model the mind. There's no supercomputer out there that's more incredible than your mind. There's no mechanical robot that's amazing, as amazing and can regenerate as incredibly well as your body. You are the most amazing thing on this planet. You've just been told otherwise. That's it. And I've just realized the truth. And I've followed and listened to my gut. I've never avoided it. I've never not listened to it. And this is why I have the information and the skills that I have. But it's taken a journey and it's taken steps. And if you work with me in one form or another, you will learn these steps and I will teach you everything that I can because I am here to get the truth out there. I am here to help people be able to heal themselves. You are the only person who can heal you. There is no quick fix. There is no magic solution. There is no magic portion. There are some great things that can help you with your symptoms, but nothing can heal you as well as you can. Nothing out there. The tools and the techniques that I share help you unravel what is stopping your body to heal your body has an innate ability to heal your mind has a brilliant ability to bring to you what you need in life so you can learn the lessons it's just not being programmed right for most of you that is it and that's the secret of the one percent of the most incredibly successful people they have trained their mind to find the answers to every question that they have that is it and I have studied these people and I have studied and I've researched and I've practiced and I've seen so many people to help them get to that point as well. Because why the hell should it just be for the 1%? Why shouldn't we all be experiencing an amazing life? Why shouldn't we all be healthy and fit and vibrant and happy? Why should it just be the 1%? That's not fair. So I am here to change that. And I am heading towards that 1% myself. I am going to I will not stop until I get all the information. As a friend of mine says, I've got this trait. Um, I don't let things go. Apparently it's the pointy chin. <laughs> so I'm like a dog with a bone apparently. So yes, I am when it comes to helping people with their health. So meditation is a really interesting thing. Many of you will have tried in meditation and it's not worked for you and you'd be like oh meditation's too hard it's steps it's baby steps so when a baby starts to walk they don't just suddenly stand up and start walking 
they don't they fall they crawl they stand up they fall on the floor and they get back up again they cry and then they go you know what i'm going to get back up and try again the first thing to know with meditation is for at least the first five or ten minutes your mind will be going mental and it'll be going and churning thoughts churning 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 thoughts your job at first is to just recognize and go wow no wonder i'm stressed no wonder i'm anxious no wonder i'm sick no wonder i'm not healing no wonder i'm depressed whatever it is for you okay whatever it is for you you just sit there and observe it that's the first step and you go right okay makes sense why i'm stressed because when I sit with myself and I'm doing nothing and I've got no distractions, the noise is, I've got to get this done, I've got to get that done, I'll never get that done, you're not good enough, this is not going to happen. Whatever noise it is for you, that's constantly going around and you're not even aware of it. So that is what the meditation is for, okay? The first level is just purely sitting there in the uncomfortable experience of it just sitting there in the most uncomfortable experience and until it's no longer uncomfortable. That's the first step to meditation. The second step to meditation is you're comfortable with the noise and you're okay with it. And then what happens is, is you buy into it. So you're noticing you're like going off on a tangent with the thought. Just allow it to be. You go off on a tangent with a thought and then you recognize and go, oh, no, I'm meant to be meditating, but here we go. I've gone into that thought and I've gone into the loop of the thought and you just say, interesting. If you say interesting, there is no judgment. It's a neutral statement. If you say, oh, no, I'm doing it again, your ego goes, we're on attack, high alert, nervous system ramps up, and then your brain and your mind go, right, we've got attack words what can we come back with this we've got to attack this if you say interesting neutral statement i think i've frozen bloody hell bloody f what happens is is the mind doesn't get involved you can go back to what the thoughts are and you just sit there with the thoughts and observe them just watch them and observe them watch them observe them if you buy into them you buy into them you come back that's interesting watch and observe watch and observe eventually what happens is it stops and it could take you it could take you two weeks doing it every day for 10 minutes it could take you two months it depends on how much noise you have so for those of you who are going to ask me questions how long it takes depends on how much noise you have depends on how much you've been burying depends on how much you've been suppressing depends on how much you've been avoiding depends on how much you've gone through in your life there is no answer to that and this is why you go and try meditation and it doesn't work and you do the guided meditations and that's the only way guided meditations for me personally don't work they're a good stepping stone to get you to the point that you meditate but to really go into that deep meditation you have to go through those two steps first to really get deep meditation so the first step is just sitting there really uncomfortable with the noise and having no judgment just sitting there and just going wow this is interesting this is interesting the second step is to sit there and observe the thoughts but don't buy into them and if you do bring yourself back then what happens is eventually the thoughts slow down so then you have the thought and then there's a big gap then you have the thought and then there's a big gap and then eventually what happens is it stops completely and it's complete silence, complete and utter silence. And you just sit in the silence and you do nothing. And that is how you meditate. It's a journey, it's a process, it takes time. That's one way of meditating. That's the deepest level of meditation that you can do. From that kind of meditation, you can immensely assist your body in healing. You can get the most incredible ideas. You can start to um, work on really deep skills, um, sharpen the saw of your intuition. 
you can change your life when you're able to access that level of meditation. You know, I can just drop into meditation and I go into like a trance that I can almost hypnotize myself. And that's because I've been practicing that for a while. Now, the second form of meditation I'm personally not a fan of is um, guided meditation. This is, as I said to you, everybody's different. Remember that my personal is to do it on my own. That's just personally for me, is to do it on my own. It's beautiful listening to guided meditations, but I struggle to get as deep as I can when I do it on my own. So guided meditations, listen to somebody whose voice sounds nice, sounds soothing, 